Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Theory Crafting. I know we haven't had a Theory Crafting episode in a while, have we? Uh, this one in particular is going to be GGM underscore Sherman Tank. Uh, rather, just Sherman. But Sherman for short, because he is going to be a tank. That is his goal, that is his life. Sherman Tank is what he is about. So what may you ask is a character that is going to be built around tanking? Well... He's going to be useless. No, seriously. He's probably going to be useless. Um, the entire goal of this character is not specifically for oneself, but for the group effort. Uh, if you have ever played an MMO, if you've ever played any kind of game that it has a tank class in it, uh, even Final Fantasy with their paladins that usually have a massive amount of hit points and defenses, but not so much on the offensive. Uh, this character is going to be built around the idea of group play. Uh, he won't necessarily be playing for himself. Um, now, I have downloaded, of course, my uh, mock rune words. So we have the, the beautiful mock uh, rune word plague here. Uh, we also have the mock rune word for the unbending will. Um, and we have several other things. Let me uh, shrink myself down a little bit here so we can really get a good look at everything. All right, so uh, right now, um, he is utilizing the mock plague rune word uh, in a phase blade um, he also has a exile shield uh, which is currently e-bugged i believe because it was loaded in from an old file so don't pay attention super much to that defense number it's a little high um, but the reason why i chose exile uh, is specifically because of the life tap proc and the defiance aura uh, these two things together are going to help me out a lot as far as uh, as what i'm trying to achieve um, I have also chosen uh, Mars Kaleidoscope over High Lord's Wrath, uh, specifically because I'm not really worried so much about the damage aspect as I am about the tanking aspect. Um, you will also find that I have some relatively silly equipment on, like for instance, I'm running uh, a pair of Hellmouth War Gauntlets. So why am I doing this? Well, the answer is I have Ravenfrost, I have Wisp Projector, and I also have Hellmouth War Gauntlets. So as you can see, I'm running Cold Absorption, Lightning Absorption, and Fire Absorption, all three. And I want to keep all three absorptions. My goal is to make this character as tanky as humanly possible in a way that allows him to, you know, just just roll right through content as far as, uh, as survivability. Now, damage-wise, he's not going to be the greatest, uh, but he will be a very heavy utility character for a group and as we go forward i think you'll notice this so first off the bat uh right off the bat we need to give him enough strength so we can actually utilize his equipment so let's go ahead and uh plink some uh, strength points in let's get him up to the point where he can actually utilize his gear so we need uh, at least 196 for the guardian angel hellforge plate which is crucial to our build and you will see why as we go forward uh if you are the kind of character who loves to have just ridiculous amounts of survivability, um, this is the build for you. Uh, we also need 136 dexterity for our phase blade. And uh, for right now, we're just going to go with the exact numbers. Um, I'm also going to check uh, with... A holy shield later to see what my block percentage is so for right now we're not going to put the points into vitality um, we're going to wait all right so um, we have our equipment on and on our other hand we have the uh, blood bite as well um, which is running the um, unbending will um, now the purpose of running the unbending will on this side is to give us a super tanky uh, mode so essentially um, in, a lot of the times in an mmo you might have two different specs you might have a spec which is more uh, your dps spec and then you might have another spec which is more like toward your like i'm tanking a boss and i would really like not like to die at this particular moment spec right so this particular spec is running a storm shield monarch uh, specifically for the purposes of of doing just that uh, because storm shield monarch of course has the 35 percent uh, damage reduction which is going to stack on top of the burr burr crown of ages which is another 31 percent um, and then we also have the 15 percent damage reduction from the verdungo's hardy coil so uh, so in totalis uh, we are running a uh, a total on this particular side of the spec of a uh, damage reduction number of uh, where's where are you hiding at sir 
Where are you hiding? Do not hide from me. I'm just blind, that's all. Uh, 81%. Um, and you might be asking yourself, well, why are we running 81% damage reduction? Why why not just 50%? 50% is the cap. Well, the reason is, is because when we are in a situation where we are threatened, um, I want to have a spec to roll back to, which will overwrite things like Decrepify, uh, Amplify Damage, for the brief period of time that they are up. So if I'm ever in a situation where I feel like I need to have a massive amount of overprotection versus uh, this particular type of thing, I will do that. And also I want to have the um, taunt sword on this particular hand, specifically so I can play around with the taunting ability. Um, now, what are we going to do for um, attacks? What are we going to do for damage? What are we going to do for things like that? Uh, well, we don't seem to have any issues with resistances on the exile spec, um, but we do have issues with resistances on the the non-exile spec. Um, however, let's go out into the blood more really quickly because I do believe our mercenary, who is also outfitted with some decent equipment, um, he is running a, a Conqueror's Crown, uh, which is using the new rune word uh, Flickering Flame. I specifically gave it to him because I wanted to have the... Um, the fire aura. I thought that would be fun, a uh, fun defensive mechanic. And then I also have him with uh, ethereal treachery and ethereal uh, unbending will. So he's going to be spamming taunt for me, which is what I want him to do on a regular basis. And I am going to be utilizing uh, the plague bite or the uh, the the plague sword uh, specifically so I can get the extra damage. I do need to figure out my resistances though. Um, it looks like I only really have to worry about poison when I'm in my alternate spec. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out. That could be fixed by just simply putting in uh, a couple poison charms as opposed to these all resistance charms. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it looks like in our, in our main spec, at the very least, we are looking pretty pretty sexy as far as that's concerned, so I don't think we have much to worry about there. Uh, we also have quite an overprotection versus fire because of this guy. It's actually quite overkill as far as I can see, but I just really wanted to use the new rune word. I thought that would be fun. So, uh, skills. This is where uh, we really need to figure things out. So um, we are already at 95% fire, 95% cold, and uh, we have 90 lightning and 90 poison. And this is because, of course, the um, caps on these particular things have not been raised. So we are relying on Guardian Angel Hellforge Plate to give us the 15 to maximum resistances um, on uh, on every single resist, which is, which is really helping us out uh, a lot as far as our survivability. Getting close to 90% is a big deal. And... Uh, it's, it's just, it really, 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 really helps as far as keeping yourself alive. Now, granted, there are certain damage sources which we cannot control. So uh, there are two damage sources which are definitely still deadly. Uh, one of them is physical damage, which we are trying to take care of with our, um, our physical damage reduction. So in this mode, we are running 46% physical damage reduction, uh, which is almost there to the cap. I think that uh, that that 4% is, uh, is acceptable, um, although we could fix that by putting a, uh, a Burr Rune in the Guardian Angel Hellforge plate, uh, which it looks like we could possibly do with relative ease. So I think we're okay with that. Um, I had considered putting in a 15% increased attack speed, all resistances 15 jewel, but it doesn't really look like we need it. Um, in fact, this might actually be better over on the other side where we seem to have a little bit of issues with our fire and our poison resistance. So maybe if we put this over here, um, that would fix that. Was that 15? So um, 75, 80. So that would bring us up to 80, which isn't exactly awful. Um, It's not terrible. It really isn't. Um, that's not terrible at all. We could we could do that. So let's go ahead and run that, and then we'll take the burr rune and we'll put it into the armor. Um, that will increase our damage reduction over on this back to 89%, which is closer to uh, where we need to be. Um, to completely negate amplify damage, by the way, we need 150% physical damage reduction, uh, which is which is a lot. Uh, we're not probably not going to get there, um, so I'm just going to have to settle for as high as I could possibly get, which is all right. 
Um, we also have a uh, pretty decent amount of life already because we're running these mythical GG game 20 life all res 5 uh, chamis, and we also have these these uh, 40 life plus 1 combat skiller uh, charms. And these are going to come in handy later on, as you will see, because we really need the plus the skills. So, uh, so let's go into our auras and let's figure out what we're going to build. So now that we know what our resistances are, we know what we need. So we still need 5% lightning and we still need 5% poison. Remember, defensive is our main concern here and we don't really care about the damage that we're outputting. Uh, that's the whole goal of this build. Now we will try to solve the damage problems um, later. Um, as we try and figure out what's going on, because we don't want to be completely useless. No paladin uh, in an MO, MO raid wants to be completely useless. So we're going to find utility um, in the way that we do things. So for right off the bat, we need two points per 1% in lightning resistance to get our 5% extra on this, right? So where is the uh, the fire resistance and the cold resistance extra coming from? I didn't even notice that. Um, so we're getting 5% max cold and fire on the exile shield. So absolutely great. Um, so that that actually solves part of our issue and, uh, and we can focus on the lightning and the poison. So we can't do anything about the poison with skills, but we can do something about the poison with lightning. So we're gonna go ahead and put in 10 points into lightning, resist lightning, uh, which is going to give us the plus 5% that we need to cap out the lightning res. So as you can see now, we have the total 95, 95, 95, 90. Um, we are also rocking the absolutely beautiful lightning absorb 20%, cold absorb 20%, cannot be frozen, and fire absorption, which is absolutely great. So we've got um, we've got a lot going on here as far as defensive is concerned. Uh, we also have the defiance aura, of course, that is coming from the exile. We have the cleansing aura, which is coming from the plague. Now, the plague is one of the things that I want to build around for this particular defensive build. And what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the synergy bonus of prayer to give us double epic regen. Okay, so this is our goal here. So we are going to put in 20 points into prayer uh, because we want prayer to have the highest base amount of regeneration possible. Then we are going to come down here and we are going to grab meditation. Uh, now we're not going to be using cleansing because cleansing is on the sword and, uh, and there's no synergy bonuses for cleansing other than prayer. But we will get the synergy bonus from prayer to cleansing, which means we now have a 44 regeneration that is being added to cleansing and we are also going to be running meditation so not only do we have cleansing defiance resist fire and uh, meditation uh, you know we are running four auras at the moment all in a, a sort of defensive category which is absolutely amazing uh, we are also going to be beefing up, obviously, our Holy Shield, which is very a very big, important part of making a heavy tanking paladin. So right off the bat, we are going to go down the list, and uh, we are going to grab Holy Shield. And, uh, and I think, without a shadow of a doubt, we are going to go ahead and buff this to maximum. There's no reason why not to buff Holy Shield to maximum if we are going to be a Holy Shield paladin. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way, shall we? So now we are rocking a total of 25,601 defense, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, we also have a, uh, a really nice regeneration rate, uh, which I'm not even sure if it will show on here. That would be interesting if it did. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just shows the Replenish Life 20, which uh, is coming from the uh, belt. And we also have some Replenish Life 7 on the Exile. So right now we're running uh, Replenish Life 20, from our items, and we also have a Replenish Life 44 from the uh, Meditation Aura, and a Replenish Life 44 
from the uh, the the cleansing aura. So uh, so at the moment, if we add this all up, we are running 44 plus 44 plus 20, which means we have a total regeneration rate of 108, which is pretty darn epic. Um, I think that uh, quite honestly, we could just stand in uh, in the middle of a bunch of monsters at this point and probably not be hurt. But we're not done. This is not all we're going to be doing. Uh, we need to go further. Let's just play around and see what kind of damage we take while standing here. Uh, this is Hell Difficulty. Not even taking any damage, and we still haven't even put any points into uh, into vitality yet. By the way, um, we are rocking 75% block chance, so we can go ahead and dump the rest of our points into vitality now with absolute ease. Uh, we definitely will not have to worry about mana because, well, we're going to be running meditation full time. Um, I don't think we actually need to put any points into meditation. Because at level 10, we already have 525% mana recovery rate, and, uh, and it doesn't offer us any extra bonus to put more points into meditation. So we're going we're gonna to ignore meditation for the time being. We have 54 skill points left, though, so we're going to play around with that and see what we can do. Now, we have a couple choices as far as damage goes. And, uh, and I put some thought into this, uh, a little bit of thought. I really did. Um, and I was thinking in my head what skills would really fit a, a paladin. What skills would really make a paladin into a tanking class, right? Um, well, as a paladin, you also would like to be able to heal your teammates. That could be pretty cool. Um, but I was really kind of hesitant about just simply building Holy Bolt. But here's the thing. Holy Bolt does actually receive a huge amount of life healed per level from prayer. And we are running prayer, which means as a utility paladin, we could totally put uh, 20 points into Holy Bolt and, uh, and get just a massive heal for our teammates. And in the, cur the uh, coming patch in 2.4, we are going to be able to pierce with Holy Bolt uh, and be able to heal our teammates even better. So as of right, right now, when you fire Holy Bolt, it hits a target and it dissipates. Uh, and this is very, very sad. And so I'm not going to be able to show you the, the enhanced version. But in the new version of the game, when you fire a Holy Bolt at one of your teammates and it hits them, it goes through them and it will hit monsters behind them, or it goes through the monsters and will hit the person that you're targeting, which makes it far better for healing targets. And, uh, and I could totally see this as a really viable option, especially considering... I'm going to be running meditation full time. So uh, so we're going to have some fun with this. Uh, so if I put 20 points in this, I will have a total of, uh, what is that, uh, 34 points left. Uh, so I need to carefully consider what I'm going to be doing with the rest of these points. And, um, and we're going to uh, see if we can figure this out. I also had an interesting idea um, that I may want to actually swap out for Seraph's Hymn. Seraph's Hymn is a plus two with plus two defensive auras, and I'm using a lot of defensive auras. Um, I don't actually, you know, the plus to skills wouldn't give me any synergy bonus on prayer, and plus to meditation is not really going to help me. Plus to cleansing is not really going to help me. So never mind. Seraph's Hymn is, is a bad choice. Uh, just a bad choice all around. Uh, so we've got... Um, Resist Lightning, which we had to put 10 points into, uh, which almost makes me think we should go with a skill that is elemental based. Um, for instance, we could potentially go with Vengeance um, and dump the rest of our points into the Vengeance synergies. Uh, let's see really quickly uh, what kind of damage we are outputting right now. So we're outputting uh, 424 to 561, which is, which is pretty pathetic, I'm going to be honest. We may be better off building this as a smiter. Um, and hear me out on this. So I've played a lot of MMOs, and uh, and and a lot of them, Lord of the Rings Online, Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, World of Warcraft, there usually is a tank with some sort of smiting ability which stuns the target. And, uh, and this really does make sense to me. So I'm thinking that we should probably stack out smite. Um, so... 
we already have Max Holy Shield, which is, of course, helping out our smite damage. We're using an Ethereal Exile and a Sacred Rondache, so we've already got pretty good smite damage. Um, granted, we won't have Fanaticism. That will be a downside. But let's go ahead and we'll beef out smite. That can be part of our defensive mechanic, because this way... We will get the very nice uh, stun mechanic. Uh, we will be able to apply our, our various effects, you know, our life tap, which is on the uh, the exile shield, and um, and also the lower resistance, which is on the phase blade. So, what else can we do here? Um, like I said, we could theoretically put twenty points into defiance uh, just to really tank out our defense as much as humanly possible uh, we do get a synergy bonus of 15 percent defense per level from holy shield uh, with defiance so if we were to put 20 points in holy shield uh, let's see how much defense that would uh, bring us up to so we're rocking a total of 535 percent at the moment um, and then we're going to do 15 times 20 plus 535%. So we're looking at a total of 835% once this is finished. Um, and uh, I can't tell what my base defense is, of course, because the Defiance Aura is, and the uh, Holy Shield are, are kind of overriding everything. Let me exit. Let me rejoin. And let me see if I can uh, can get a better idea on this. All right, so we still can't get, like, our base defense. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's assume that's our base defense, 2,300. That seems like a uh, reasonable assumption. Um, and then, of course, we have Defiance, and we have all these other things running. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Defiance actually adds on to the percentage from the Holy Shield. They don't stack cumulatively. So, uh, so let me look up Defiance. And we're going to look at the level 14 defiance. And uh, we're going to take the number and we're going to add it to the um, to the holy shield. And we're going to see how high we can get this. So, uh, so defiance at level 14 is a 200% enhance in defense. So let's go ahead and just add 200% to our 835%, which is going to be 1,035. Um, and then we take our base defense... Uh, which was 2300 and uh, and we're going to multiply that out so 2300 plus 1035 percent um hate using this calculator sometimes um so if we were to build defiance it looks like we would go up to 26000 105. So something must be wrong with my calculations because I'm already at 25,601. Of course, it could just simply be because of the difference in the two shields. Uh, yeah, the difference in these two shields is is pretty massive. So let's go ahead and um, and figure out what we want to do with these last few points. Uh, so we do have Smite. So that is one of our two skills. Uh, so that is interesting. We're just going to go ahead and um, assign that to uh, Z and X. Let's just go ahead and assign that to Z. And then uh, we need another skill. So we can't just be a physical damage character as much as I would like to. Um, let's try and figure out another form of damage. So um, Really, I'm really leaning toward Holy Bolt, but I'm also really not leaning toward Holy Bolt. I mean, I still already have he uh, Holy Bolt, and it does 132 to 280, which is not bad. Um, it's already dishing out a pretty nice amount of, uh, of damage, and, um, and I could put that on X, and I could use that as needed to, uh, to heal targets, like I could heal my Mercenary with it. Kill this undead monster right here. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Of course, it doesn't really do enough damage right now because I don't have it leveled. Hmm. <laughs> 
Hmm. <laughs> okay, so the smite is good, um, but we still need some other mechanics here as well. And um, God, I, I, uh, I really would like to have probably a G-Face at some point uh, to swap out specifically for, for smiting. But that's not too big of a deal. I'm not too worried about that. Let's uh, let's figure out what to do with the rest of these points, shall we? So um, we've got a main damage ability, uh, but we need a sub damage ability. We need something that is going to uh, allow us to spam some form of damage that is not physical. And um, I wonder what our attack rating even is in this build. It's very, very low. So maybe Smite really is the best option for us because honestly, Smite is a uh, hit that does not miss. And, uh, and because we have focused so much on the the defensive side of things, um, we have found ourselves in a situation where, you know, we have absolutely no attack rating, which is which is fine because we don't really care about attack rating for that for that specific purpose. Um, even our, our entire goal with this was to create a a tanking character. Uh, speaking of which, let me see if um, <coughs> let me see if our uh, our taunt works with the smite ability. That's an interesting question. Uh, does taunt work with smite? So let's get our meditation aura up. And let me go smite some things real quick and see if we can get this. Uh... So the taunt does work with smite. Absolutely great. Interesting. All right, so we do have our taunt weapon set up then, and we also have our, uh, our regular setup, which is pretty darn sweet. And we still have skill points left, um, so we're gonna we're gonna do something with these. And uh, and I think what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna beef up Holy Bolt. So that's gonna be uh, one of our choices right there. So now we're rocking a 276 to 560. Eight heal on the Holy Bolt, so you know we're kind of like the Holy Paladin in uh, Final Fantasy XI. We've got uh, we've got Holy damage, we've got a Shield Bash, you know we've got uh, we've got all the really nice things that uh, a Paladin should have, right? And um, as far as utility goes, I mean we do have Smite, we do have Holy Shield, uh, we don't have Fanaticism. But, um, you know, we could always get fanaticism. We could always get some of these other things if we need to. And um, on top of this, we're also rocking the, the lower resistance on the, um, on the plague rune word. So, uh, so, you know, in, in battles, uh, we're going to have the lower resistance proc, and we're going to be just so useful to the group. And that's really how I view this character. So we've got meditation running. Right, so we got meditation. We are enhancing all the mana of our group. We've got cleansing running. We are clearing all of the poisons and curses from our group. We have uh, defiance running because we are uh, running an exile. We have resist fire running because we have the uh, resist fire mask on the barbarian mercenary. Um, we have four different auras running right now that are useful to our group. We also cast life tap on on attack and we cast or resist when struck which means we are going to be all over the place with some crazy amounts of damage we won't really have to worry too much about the life tap getting overwritten by the lower resistance because we're so tanky that i really doubt we're actually going to be able to die to much of anything in fact since we finally got our build straight let's go ahead and play around with it shall we Ooh, I like this already. Just the sheer tankiness of it. The sheer and utter tankiness. And here we have our first physical immune monster, who is uh, undead, stone skin, mana burn, fire enchanted. And uh, somehow we're still managing to kill him, which is quite interesting. He's also immune to poison, so the uh, the other effects aren't working either, which is uh, which is quite interesting.
trying to test out my uh, my 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 holy bolt on these guys. Ho ho ho! Man, I really like this. I really, really, quite like this. Just the sheer utility of it. Just the 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 awesomeness of of like the regeneration and the the meditation aura, the cleansing aura. They're both helping my mercenary. My mercenary's regeneration rate. Well, actually, mercenaries don't have regeneration rate, do they? Oh man, the sadness there. They need to fix that. They need to make it so mercs can have regeneration rate. But my regeneration rate is through the roof. I'm rocking uh, 1,800 health. It could be a little bit higher, but that's pretty nice. Freaking sweet. All right, let's play around with the uh, the taunt sword for a little while, shall we? Let's uh, let's just run around with the taunt. The stun is absolutely amazing, um, and I'm util trying to utilize the smite stun in a way which is extremely effective for my character. Um, and as you saw there, I was uh, getting a little bit hurt as far as the elemental damage went, so I swapped back over to my other set. Uh, which has the regenerations, and uh, still, you know, still doing just fine. Because remember, the taunt is not protecting you versus the elemental damage. So the taunt only reduces the damage of the incoming physical attacks. So if you're fighting a monster which is highly physical in nature, like for instance a Death Lord or something along those lines, um, you know, you definitely are going to want to utilize the um, you're definitely going to want to utilize the taunt weapon. Uh, but if you're not fighting a monster who is highly physical in nature, like if you're fighting the Oblivion Knights who are shooting, you know, elemental attacks at you, you're probably going to want to switch back to your plague weapon, go for the regeneration, um, you know, tackle in the uh, the the very nice anti-curse effects and things like that. Um, as you can see, they keep trying to curse me with amplify damage and. Um, um, and decrepify, and thankfully, due to my increased amount of um, of degeneration, essentially, from having the cleansing aura, um, I can swap over and I can just simply nullify that almost entirely, which is pretty darn sweet. Um, I also put treachery on the mercenary specifically for this reason, because I wanted my mercenary to go through uh, no curses. I did not want him to be running low resistance. I did not want them to have amplified damage on him. I did not want them to have decrepify on him. Whatever curses they spit out, I wanted my mercenary just completely and utterly immune to. Um, and, and he is. For the most part, at this point, because he is running treachery, because he is running my cleansing aura, um, he is completely immune to those auras. And the other beautiful thing here is because he is running the the beautiful uh, new rune word for um, the resist fire, which is uh, flickering flame. He is also practically immune to fire resistance. And we need to, you know, we need to test him. Uh, we need to go through the process of taking him into an area that is extremely fire. Uh, heavy. So we're going to take him to the, the Travancall Council and we're going to see how he rocks against uh, all those Hydra spams. This is going to be interesting. Um, now granted this is just player one. Um, I know that this particular character is not going to be the greatest in players eight, um, but this character is meant to be played in groups. So I don't feel it's necessarily a uh, fair argument to test him in players eight without a group. Because if he is playing in Player's 8, he's playing with a group. He's not playing by himself. Uh, that's the entire purpose of this Paladin, is to be a group Paladin. Uh, thus, the Cleansing Aura, the Meditation Aura, you know, the, the Defiance Aura, the, the Lower Resistance, you know, the, the Spamming of the Holy Bolt, all these various things are specifically so that he can be extremely useful in a group setting, which is, uh, which is exactly as I want him to be.
So I haven't really seen uh, my mercenary taking very much damage. Um, he is quite honestly not taking any damage at all, which is which is beautiful. Oh no, his his health went down by just a little bit there for a second. No, no, no. He's still alive. He's doing fine. They're uh, they're healing each other. Um, if, I don't know if you know this or not, but the um, the council members will actually heal each other. It's a it's a whole thing. <laughs> See his HP just going boop, boop, boop. every single time the council one of the council members heals one of the other council members. It's um it's an interesting ability for them to be able to heal each other. And when I say interesting, I mean super duper duper annoying and makes me want to cry. Not bad. Um, I deliberately took longer there than I would have normally because I really wanted to give him a good testing. And um, and now let's give him the ultimate test to see how well he can do in a player's 8 trap and call. Uh, so we're going to bump it up to the player's 8 and we're going to see what we can do with that. Uh, so first off, let's just go ahead and type in slash players 8. Uh, players set to 8. So there we go. So now we are in the same situation that we were before. Uh, and uh, and it should be quite deadly. Now let's let's be fair and let's go grab some potions uh, because you know if I have to toss him a potion or two, that's not exactly a bad thing. Uh, so let's just grab a uh, a stack of potions. And uh, you know what? Just for giggles, I wonder if I can swap out to uh, high lords without losing all my resistances. Um. Ooh, okay. I need more. Uh, I need more stats. That's right. I, I perfectly min max my stats, so I lose access to my plague and uh, guardian angel. Uh, so I would have to. Uh, I'd have to respec him and take a couple points out of vitality. And I just don't. Uh, I don't really. I'm too lazy for that. I'm, I'm just. I'm just too lazy for that. I already. I've already gone through all this. We're not. We're not going through anything else. No healing others. No healing others. Stop it. Do not heal your friends as I as I as I heal my mercenary. All right, here we go. All right, Merc Alert. Let's see if you can survive. Hell, let's see if I can survive. Players eight, Traven call, and we're gonna do this the worst way possible. So we've already got a monster who is immune to physical. So this is gonna be fun. We're gonna have to see if we can figure out a way to kill him. Uh, let's just focus on the monsters that we can kill for now. And uh, I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to overcome the massive um, heals from all the various council members. We might have to focus our damage together, which is uh, which is quite sad, uh, considering you know I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, make a paladin who can actually survive on his own, and uh, and literally I can kill these guys, but but they're just spam healing each other, which makes this very difficult. Um, hmm. Let's, let's, uh, here, you go over here. All right. Merc, yep, you do your business. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's spread out the stuns a little bit. This will definitely help. Uh, spread out the stuns. Uh, let's get, uh, let's get everything nice and stunned. And now let's focus down this one monster here. This is, uh, this is, ooh, he's finally taking damage. Oh, no. No, don't die, mercenary. I'll heal you. Don't die. I mean, I know you got like 8,000 hydras on you, buddy, but, but don't, don't, don't bite the dust. Oh, no. So players eight Traven call, and that is a lot of hydras. Let's be perfectly honest. That is a lot of hydras. Now, granted, what I probably should have done um, at any given point was I probably should have taken the council members and brought them to their own. Like, if I was in this situation and they were cross-healing each other, the best thing for me to do would have been to move the council members away from each other so that I wouldn't have to worry about them cross-healing each other. But I was really just trying to test out the barbarian mercenary. That was my goal. I really just wanted to get him... Um, under a kind of a stress test to really see what he could pull off and what he couldn't. So let's let's apply this uh, this new method 
uh, where we actually try to kill the, the council members correctly. And let's see how, uh, how he stands up. So, you know, obviously not deliberately trying to get him killed. And I did get him killed. So, you know, missing success, but also sadness uh, because he died. There's that. <laughs> oh, the sadness. Let's go, buddy. We're getting revenge. We are getting revenge. Worry ye not. I don't even know if I can kill this guy. He's like super stone skin, and he's immune to fire, uh, and he's a demon. And uh, I think my mercenary is the only one that can actually kill him. You stay over there. I'm going to go kill your friends. What's up, buddy? I heard you like mudkips. <laughs> this build could probably use a little bit more crushing blow. Um, that would definitely be nice. And um, I never did use the... Uh, look, I got a peasant's crown. <laughs> I got a peasant's crown, y'all. Look at that. Beautiful. I'll hang on to that. That'll be in the stash for you guys. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, um, this build and all future builds that I do uh, will be available for you guys and gals to download. So if you check down in the description of the video, you will find a link to the save file uh, for this character so that you can play around with, uh, with Mr. Sherman Tank. And, um, and I hope you have fun with him because, uh, because I definitely am. I mean, granted, he doesn't do the uh, most amazing damage, and I probably could trade off a little bit of his survivability for, uh, you know, most likely um, a little bit of damage here or there, some crushing blow perhaps, um, something that um, might make him a little bit more tanky, or a little less tanky, but a little bit more damaging. Um, he could be using Goblin Toes instead of Gore Riders, for instance, uh, which could theoretically give him a pretty nice boost to his, uh, his crushing blow potential. Uh, because right now the only crushing blow he has is on the Myrmidon Greaves, uh, which is which is not as great. And uh, let's go ahead and push Mr. Uh, Gillib Flamefinger uh, with the rest of the members. You're, you know, we, we can't just have you on your own, sir. You know, and despite the fact that I got him killed earlier, I mean, look at how well he's doing. He's not doing poorly. Like, he really is not doing poorly in this situation. That uh, that new flickering flame helmet is really, really quite nice. <laughs> Killing one monster while they're all healing each other is is such a pain in the butt. They just, I mean, they heal like almost the entire bar. Like it's not even just like they're healing just a tiny bit. Like the heal, like each heal is like half the bar of the of the the monster that you're killing. Uh, it's like a percentage based heal or something, and it's and it's crazy. So one thing that I could definitely use is some increased attack speed. Um, that would definitely be nice. A little bit of a little bit of increased attack speed. Um, the meditation aura is not entirely necessary. Uh, gasp. Um, I could potentially go to a level one fanaticism aura. Uh, that could be an interesting change. And um, I don't know. Let's let's make that small adjustment, shall we? So we're going to go down and grab fanaticism. Uh, I think that that is a good choice for us, just simply having fanaticism. So we're going to grab it. And uh, I'm going to put the remaining points into fanaticism. Actually, you know what? I didn't even think about this, but, uh, you know, as a as a defensive mechanic, we should probably get redemption. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to put one point into defiance so we can go down and grab redemption. And, uh, and then we're going to stack the rest of our points into defiance. So we've got the uh, the extra defense on our on our armor. So now we're rocking 30,200 defense with 75% block rate. Uh, and of course we get the extra blocking rate from the uh, Hellforge Guardian Angel uh, with the 40% on the exile. So we're running 40, 50, 60, 70%, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm not sure if that brings us up to the block, uh, the, the uh, break point that we need to be at. We may have to uh, examine that in the future. But let's go ahead and switch to Fanaticism. 
and I'm sure that this will increase our kill speed uh, exponentially. Uh, just simply having fanaticism is a huge bonus to the attack rate. And of course, it's also going to increase the attack rate of our mercenary, which is certainly very nice. What's up, Torque Ice Fist, buddy? What's up, buddy, buddy, buddy? How's it going, my buddy pal? You got stone skin? All right. The stonest of skins, huh? My Merc has Bash, and I have a knockback, and I'm literally standing on one side, and my Merc is on the other, and we are literally just knocking him into each other, and it is hilarious. He literally cannot move or do anything. Absolutely beautiful. Um, absolutely beautiful. So we have one more council member to kill, and that is the, uh, the physically immune one, which uh, that one's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, let me see if I can set him up f for murderization. I don't even know how much elemental damage I actually do or how much elemental damage my Merc actually does. Um, I see nothing. <laughs> Good luck killing this guy. I'll kill you with Holy Bolt. He's not even, a, he's not even undead, and I can't even do that. Uh, Blessed Hammers... The worst blessed hammers ever, and I don't care. You know what? Get inside the uh, the room, all right? How about we just bully you around, Mr. Mister Ishmael Vile Hand? Oh, look, a defense shrine. That's what I needed. More defense. 33,000. Oh, you took my shrine away, you hoe bag. You are... You know what? You know what? You are dying, and I don't care what it takes. We are just going to make this happen. And I will just stand here until you are dead. I'm doing damage ever so slowly. And you know what? You know what? That's all that matters. I'm pretty sure it's like open wounds or something that's actually dishing out the damage. Because I think open wounds actually can work as long as the monster is damaged. Even if the monster is immune to physical. And I'm pretty sure like that's the only damage that's getting through is open wounds at this particular point. And I don't even care. Uh, my mercenary might be doing some poison damage. And I'm doing a little bit of poison damage with Poison Nova. But, uh, you know... I'm dedicated, okay? He's gonna die. It's, uh, this is, this is the, gonna be the end of the video. Is Ishmael Vile Hand's downfall. Oh, man. I might as well sing you a song. Far over the misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old we must Away, ere break of day, to reclaim our long lost forgotten gold. And he's still not dead. Might as well take a little sip of my soda. The vilest of Ishmael's. No, oh, Ishmael the vile. Oh, Ishmael the vile, why do you come for me? Oh, Ishmael the vile, let's go to the sea and I will show you all the rocks and stones that line upon the shore. And when we go, I will take you on some more and we'll go fishing down by the lake. 
cake and I will bake you a Sunday cake. Oh, Ishmael, why do you bail on our dates to the sea where we go fishing and have some fun with all our friends? You're just mean. Goodbye, sir. And he dropped me a spiderweb sash. What a kind fellow. <laughs> anyway, as always, guys and gals, I do appreciate you watching my videos, even when they are silly theory crafts about a paladin who is nigh indestructible. The link to this character will be down in the description of the video, so feel free to download him and play with him to your heart's content. Uh, and, uh, and be nice to Sherman Tank, because he is my creation. And as always, keep watching.